Hi guys and welcome to Studio Wildlife. In this video I'm going to show you a bit of a longer version of my painting a tiger cub in acrylics. I'm going to show you a little bit about my process of painting this tiger cub and give you a few tips for painting white fur when you want to do it realistically on an animal painting. I'm painting on a primed MDF board. This is six inches by four inches and I've just primed it with some PVA glue and then a layer of gesso. To start with, I've traced my image just using some tracing paper and a soft pencil and then I am blocking in my stripes using a mix of burnt umber and Payne's Grey. If you'd actually like to see the full version of this video, I've slowed it down in real time and talked for the full two hours of this painting, then head over to my Patreon and join my Patreon channel. So anyway, you can watch this full real-time video of this tiger painting on my Patreon channel where I've got loads of tips and I talk through that entire process. I'll just pop a link to that in the description below. Next, I make a start on the background. I'm just using a filbert brush here and a sap green paint. I then eventually mix some browns and some yellows and a little bit of white to this to just add some variation. I actually finish it off using an airbrush, but I don't get around to showing the airbrush just because I didn't film it. That's not on the Patreon channel either, but I will be putting a video up showing you exactly how I do my background with an airbrush, but if you really want to learn, just watch some videos on YouTube, they don't have to be mine, on how to use an airbrush, but I do really recommend it because it's really useful for painting soft backgrounds just like this. When I'm painting white fur, I always like to start with a dark undertone. For this one, I'm just using brown mixed with a little bit of black, just to create a very dark brown grey. I like to start my paintings working from dark to light, because that allows me to create texture, it allows me to give the impression of layers. Once I've got that first darker wash blocked in, I will start to add some lighter fur, just using a small filbert brush, and a mix of white, grey and burnt umber just to create my first initial layers of fur. I will then work in lighter and lighter layers, gradually adding more white to each strand to just build up and add layers of fur and some form and some 3D structure to my painting. For this, because I'm just working on the back of the tiger and it's kind of out of focus on my reference photo, I don't need to focus too much on creating sharp detailed fur. It's more about focusing on the colors and the light and the shadows rather than those individual strands. So for this, it's just a case of getting that blurred fur look, focusing on the colours, making sure we've got those shadows and that form correct. Once you've painted in those white strands, you can then start to paint back in the black fur, but in this case, because it's a white tiger I'm painting, I'm not actually using black stripes, I'm using some dark brown stripes, because what you tend to see, especially with the cubs, is the stripes aren't actually black, but they're just a very dark brown, with the areas that are hitting the light are a much more sort of burnt sienna colour, a lot brighter, a little bit more on the orange side. I would just like to say, if you do want to use the same reference photo that I'm doing, or you want to do a copy of this painting, you must purchase the reference photo yourselves from wildlifereferencephotos.com. Do not just use somebody else's photograph without permission, because they have copyrights on it, and it's poor practice, and in some cases it can actually be illegal. So I purchased this reference photo from wildlifereferencephotos.com. I think it is one of Emmanuel Keller's photos. Great photographer. Don't quote me on that because I'm not sure if it actually is, but I think it's one of his. WildlifeReferencePhotos.com, great resource for wildlife reference photos, as it says in the name. So don't forget to go and check them out. So 
So don't forget, if you want to copy it or you want to do a similar painting using this reference photo, please go and purchase the reference photo from the website. For the neck, I follow pretty much the same process. I start by blocking in my darkest colours, but for the neck, I actually do a little bit of a blocking first and then add my stripes next. So I don't wait till last. I do my dark stripes first. This is just because I want them a little bit more prominent. So I put my dark stripes in and then I work over the top with light grey colours, never pure white. You don't want to use pure white when you're painting white animals. I know that sounds wrong but you never want to use pure white you want to use the colors that are reflected in your background so when i'm doing mine i keep it sort of a mid-tone to light gray color and mix a little bit of the orange or mix a little bit of the green that's in my background into that fur color to just give it a little bit of saturation just to give the impression of some of those reflected lights appearing in that white fur The face of this piece is going to be the bit that is the main focal point. So this is the bit that's the most detailed. So I always start with either the eyes or the nose. Usually I start with the eyes, but in this one, just because it's so small, I'm leaving the eyes to last. And I don't really like painting the nose because it's so small. So I just wanted to get this out of the way and do it first. So I'm just using some mixes of a red, a little bit of burnt umber and some white for the nose and just doing a dotting technique, which I talk a little bit about in my Patreon video, just to add some texture and a little bit of detail to that tiny nose. Once the nose is done, I just add a little bit of black to put a bit of life into my picture around the eye just so that I've got something to look at and something to act as a kind of focal point and then I begin blocking in the face. When I'm blocking in the face I'm looking at the colours of the reference photo so there are some browns, there are some greys, never just using pure black and pure white, never just mixing black and white on their own to make the grey, always adding in the colours that I can see in my reference photo to put a little bit of saturation into those greys. So in the cooler areas where it's a bit darker, I might add a little bit more blue to make it a little bit cooler. Whereas in the lighter areas where it's a little bit warmer, I might add a little bit more brown to give it that warmer feel. For the face, the blocking is a little bit more detailed. So for the back and the neck, I just sort of did one solid colour for the blocking. Whereas for the face, because this is where I really want all that form and that shape to be, I'm focusing on where my highlights are going to be and where my shadows are going to be. I'm not focusing on details yet. I'm just doing a blocking just to act as a guide, showing me where I want my lightest fur to be later on and where I want my darkest fur to be as well. It is important to note that I am painting much darker than the colours that I would be painting in the final layers. That's because I want to layer my fur over the top to give impressions of thick, fluffy, cute cub fur. So again, I'm just mixing up a grey and I'm using sort of a bit of Payne's grey, which is sort of a bluey grey mixed with some white. I'm just using a small detail brush to start to add in some of my darks. I'm not going really dark with the face because the face is going to be the brightest part of this picture. So I want to keep my darks of my face actually more around a mid-tone grey. Then I'm just going to mix a lighter grey for the rest of the fur. And again, even though throughout this process it might look like I'm using pure white on the camera, 
in reality, I'm actually using a bit of black with a bit of white, mixed with a tiny little bit of Payne's Grey, a tiny little bit of Burnt Umber, and a little bit of green that is shown in the background. When I'm painting fur, I like to make sure, especially in the areas where it's going to be crisp and detailed, that I'm leaving plenty of gaps between each strand of fur. I'm making sure that you can see the layers underneath, especially those darker layers, so that it gives the impression of 3D layers. I'm making sure that each strand is one, separated from the last, two, each strand is slightly different from the last one, so that means it's a slightly different length, or it starts in a slightly different place, or it curls in a slightly different direction, just so that we add some variation to the painting, which is what you would see in the fur of a real-life tiger. So making sure that we're having fur that is not just all one direction, all one shape, all one length, and all one sort of singular straight line we're making sure to curl them and twist them to add some interest will make your piece look much more realistic and i'm just using that mix for the colored gray that i talked about before and just adding more and more white with each layer as we build the highlights up and again, even though it looks like I'm using pure white, I'm not using pure white for the painting. You want to avoid pure white as much as possible and create mixes that are close to white but contain some saturated colour that tie your piece in with the background. I've done a video that talks through this a little bit more on painting white fur, so I'll put a link to that in the description below and I'll pop a little card up at the top so that you can watch that after this video. And basically the principles behind painting white fur is make sure that the colours that are in your background or the colours that are in the environment of the animal that you're trying to paint will be reflected in the highlights of the white fur. So even though you're painting completely bright white fur, you might think it looks bright white, your eyes are actually tricking you, and if you actually study it and look at it, you could use digital software to do that, to do use a colour picker. In real life, that fur would actually contain lots and lots of different colours that are reflections from the colours that are in the environment around the animal. Again, I'll just repeat the process with the stripes on the face, just using a small detail brush, and again, not going too dark, just using some burnt umber, mixed with a little bit of black here, because I just want the stripes to have that little bit more contrast than the rest of the body. And then once I've got those stripes in, and remember the stripes aren't just solid black, they're not blobs of colour. They are fur just like the white fur. So add some lighter strands in there as well to give that impression of fur. With a tiger like this, when it's a white tiger, usually those little strands are brown. So in the highlights, the areas where the light is hitting on those dark stripes, add some lighter brown colours just to give the impression of that 3D shape and give the impression that it is actually fur and not just black blobs. With a realistic tiger, sorry, not a realistic tiger, but a regular coloured tiger, so a orange tiger, usually the colours that are seen in those stripes are bluer or a little bit purplier. So add those in the highlights instead. But for a white tiger like this, you want brown stripes with slightly lighter brown or slightly orange brown strands of fur in those darker stripes where the light is hitting the tiger. The final stage of this process was the eye, so I wanted to give a nice deep blue eye, so I first started with my darkest blue and then gradually added some white to the mix, added one layer of that lighter mix and then repeated the process, adding more white with each subsequent layer to establish the light hitting the coloured iris of the eye. To finish it off, I added some white. This is where I can use my pure white, purely for the finishing touches of the highlight of the eye. That's the bit that I want to stand out because that's the bit that I want the viewer to be drawn to. That's where I believe the life of a painting like this is found in those eyes. So I want the brightest white, that pure white, saved for the eye.
For the whiskers, because I know a lot of you guys ask what brushes I use, this is a Pro Art Dagger Brush. It's fantastic, sometimes called a sword liner, but it's fantastic for doing the whiskers. For animals like this, for the tiger, I like to also use my pure white for the whiskers as well, because I really want them to stand out against that white fur. This can be done with the pure white because my tiger is quite brightly lit, but tigers that maybe have areas in shadow where part of those whiskers would be in the shadow, you wouldn't use pure white, you would use a much darker sort of mid-tone to dark grey to reflect the fact that they are in the shadow. So make sure when you're painting realistic animals like this, you're thinking about the lights as well as the details, you're thinking about the colours as well as the details. And that's pretty much it for this quick guide for painting realistic tigers, specifically realistic white tigers. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as I said, if you would like to watch a more in-depth video of this, go and check out my Patreon channel. It's just starting up, there's loads of videos on there, and I plan to keep on adding more and more and more videos on there for you guys. As always, thank you so much for watching, make sure to check out that Patreon channel and also head on over to studiowildlife.com for more wildlife art tips. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.